Alright guys, how do you move content from your DVR to your computer? Simple question, right? Should be a simple answer. But as you know, it's not. If you're looking at this video, you've been looking um, online, you're looking for the answer, and it's kind of, it's not really the most easiest, it's not the easiest thing to find, honestly. Now, um, hopefully, I'm going to run off here, and this is unscripted. I hope I don't miss anything. And um, if I do, I'll try to put bar uh, little links and fix things and whatnot while I'm going. <clears throat> First thing that we need to figure out is whether or not you're using a TiVo or if you have a regular set-top box. If you have a regular set-top box, you now need... Um, I don't uh, need to do updates right now. <laughs> Sorry, automatic updates. Always make sure you check to make sure your software is up to date. All right, um, besides that, um, the first thing that you want to do is uh, you want to um, uh, look at the back of your box, find out if you have a FireWire 400 cable connection on the back. If you have a FireWire 400 port or FireWire port in general, it should be by law live. It should work. You should be able to connect to a computer, uh, connect it to a computer. Um, check to see what kind of cable you need. You either need a six pin or a four pin FireWire cable. Get one plug it into your DVR. If you're on a Mac, your next step is going to be this. You're going to go to the internet and you're going to look for the Apple Firewire SDK. Okay, Your Google search is going to come up and send you to the Apple Developer Connection. You're going to come down right here and you're going to download the Firewire SDK 26 or whatever version is available for Mac OS 10. After you download that, go to Spotlight because you're not going to find it any other way. Go to Spotlight and type in AVC and you're going to come up with a hit result for a program called AVC Video Capture. AVC Video Capture will allow for live recording of content streamed over a FireWire cable. That's kind of the point of this program. Um, it's one of the few out there that I know that actually 100% works. Find your device in your list, click on it, always make sure you click on it because if it's not chosen already for you, the link to capture from device will not work. The next thing you do, you press DVR list or whatever on your DVR to pull up the list of recorded content. This will allow you to set it up to record live events right off of the television channel and you can set the channel number and everything but that's a way different discussion than what we want to get to. This is for um, getting content from the DVR that you've already recorded so that you can move it off and record something else. This is for stuff you want to keep. Also, the next thing, you notice how it says EMI right here? This actually will let you know and it will usually say copy freely and some of them may say copy once, but that means that it's not illegal for you to be able to do this. This is completely legal and that is the code on there that basically lets the DVR know that if <clears throat> excuse me, if a if a person accesses this file, they can only record it through one time or they can record it multiple times. So, legalities aside, you're fine. Don't worry about that. Anyway, hit play on your television and hit capture from device here. The device will start where the computer will record what is streamed through in real time to your television. That means if it's a four hour football game or a one hour television show, you must watch it in order to record it. After that, you're going to be left with a weird file. Okay? That file is going to be this kind of file an M2T file. M2T files are playable in VLC, but pretty much are unplayable in other um, types of players. Okay, I think uh, Miro is another one. It's a new freebie program. You usually find it on the Linux installations, but um, it'll play it as well. Just stick with VLC. VLC and Handbrake can both do a, con a video conversion for you and turn this M2 file into .mov, MPEG, AVI, whatever you choose. Problem though is is that in my experience if you want to keep 
these files at a high resolution, you're going to triple the file size. And I exactly, you just started going, oh God, because that's already five gigs, right? That's, you know, that's freaking huge. Um, let's just say that the device that I have connected here um, was prior to me getting a TiVo. And um, uh, a couple football games that I have are 18 to 25 gigs in size. And um, I've just been, I've been unable to uh, find a program that will let me be able to convert the file, keep the size at a reasonable, you know, reason, keep it at a reasonable size, and um, convert it to uh, MOV or MPEG or something like that. That way I can edit the commercials out. Um, so I might have to do an update to this if I can figure that out. So in the meantime, this is how you can get them off your DVR, off of a regular Cox, Comcast, um, anything that's got a Firewire cable. Get it from there, get it to your computer so that you can watch it. I hope you guivs enjoyed that. Now, for the TiVo owners, if you have a TiVo, you need to get a program called iTiVo. And um, I only have a handful of shows in here right now to be able to show you. You can see whether or not they're in HD, and you can see the file sizes. Uh, this will extract them from your TiVo wirelessly over your home network. And I have a file set up here. Just to show you, here is Mythbusters, <clears throat> already set up in MP4. So as you can see, we even have a preview. We can do quick launch and start playing the video. And so that I don't get in trouble for showing that, um, we'll keep it short. But anyway, so this is already ready to go for you to be able to take it with you on your different types of portable media. Good. However, you can see here I came down and I've edited this one and took the commercials out. Um, this is much more manageable, especially if you're wanting to keep it at full 1080i HD. And this is able to be streamed back and forth um, between different devices. Um, so, the next thing is, uh, you might think, well, iMovie came with my Mac, so I'll use it. Well, I have iMovie and I also have Final Cut. They really don't like MP4 uh, files. Um, so you're going to need a new program to do your edits with. Let me get this out of the way and this and show it to you. It is called MPEG Stream Clip. Google it, you'll find it. And what MPEG Stream Clip does is it actually lets you take um, a file, leave it in its original format like we have here, and let you kind of cut things out of it. So I've already marked an endpoint and an outpoint down here, as you can see indicated by the gray bar. Now all you have to do is right click and hit cut. That just took out the first set of commercials from the television show. And now I can hit play and I'm going to be able to see the video and you can kind of skip around in here with it. Alright, this is Nip Tuck. And then I can eventually get to here where we have a commercial. And you know, you find the commercial, you mark your endpoint and your outpoint, you go to edit, you'll select an endpoint, and then you'll scroll to the end of the commercials, select an outpoint. And that'll give you the gray bar section that I just had. You'll do the right click, cut, and when you're done, go to File, Save As. Um, and you can do all your cuts first and then do file save as and it will keep the same integrity, the same file size, um, all the resolution will be, you know, everything is maintained just as it comes off your TiVo except now you don't have the commercials in there and especially with HD commercials and stuff like that you're going to trim a gig, a gig and a half off of your video. Um, if you guys have any questions please post below and let me know. Also don't forget to subscribe and um, hopefully uh, this works well for you guys. And if you have any questions, you'll post them below. And I'll see if I can't get a response for you or get an answer. Thanks.